But moving on to our next one, relevance. relevance. Yeah. Does this information fit my needs? Is this the kind of information I'm looking for right now? Yeah, Rob, I'm sure you've had this experience where you're researching for something that you're writing and you find a piece of, you find some materials, you find a piece of writing that is just really interesting and excellent and you want to work it into your own writing. Um, but the problem is it's not actually a good fit. We've all been there, I assume. Yeah, I have had that where it was a really interesting book, but I would need to change my topic if I wanted to include the stuff I learned from that book in my writing. Right. Now, there have been times when I tried to do that, when I tried to change my topic because of the new cool book I read, and usually my writing ended up unfocused. Yes. Uh, and it created a lot of problems for me. But you need a clear idea what your topic is, mm. and when you have a clear idea what your topic is, then it's easier for you to know if the information does or doesn't fit. Right. So, does this information relate to my topic? Right. What audience was it made for? Right. If I'm a university student, but I'm using an information source that was writing to elementary school students, well, that's going to look a little bit strange when I put it in my bibliography. Yes, if you are a biology major and you're using material about the coronavirus that was sent out to uh, worried mothers, <laughs> um, the reason they made that document, the reason they published the information in the way they published it, makes it very useful to calm down worried mothers, but right. maybe less useful for a biology major. Right. One of the most common things that I encountered uh, in university was my instructors insisting that my sources be academic journals. Why were they doing that? Well, partially because they were just being difficult, but also because they wanted me to use sources that were writing to university students, university professors, experts in the field, and uh, sources that were not writing for general audiences. Yeah, and this is a mistake people sometimes make if most of the sources they use are things like digital newspapers or online journals. Yeah, um, online Wikipedia magazines. is a big culprit. Yeah, Wikipedia is good for general information, but it's not for experts. Right. And that's the problem people find when, when they go into those kinds of sources instead of looking at what do the scholars say, what do the experts say. Right. Is the information at the right level for my needs? Yeah, is it too basic, like we just talked about a moment ago? Or on the other hand, is it too advanced? That can happen too. Um, maybe I need to learn some information about a topic, and an entire book about the topic is just more than I need. Right. Or another example might be, right now, the Korean government is having to distribute a lot of information about the coronavirus for the general public. The goal of that information is to be helpful, but if the Korean government were to distribute diagrams of the, the virus itself... Uh, or the genetic sequence, the genome of the virus... Right, that wouldn't actually be helpful. Yeah, so, so sometimes the information you need, uh, sometimes there will be sources that go deeper than you need to go, and what that will do is it'll eat up all your time when yeah. you could be looking at other sources. Right, which... If, if you need to read an entire book to understand the thing you're trying to talk about only for one paragraph. Right. And did I check a variety of sources before choosing this one? I have to admit, when I was a student, I was very guilty of finding a source that was going to look correct in my bibliography and just running with it rather than really going through and finding a number of sources, um, comparing information, and using the one that was most appropriate for what I was doing. Another thing people do is they choose the first source instead of looking for the best source. That's right. Uh, oh, here's a book about that topic. Okay, I'm good. Well, sometimes if you went one or two books over on the shelf, you would find an even better book. And another thing that can happen is the first two books you get might have one view, 
And the next book might give you a totally different way of thinking about it that is really helpful to you. Right. Check a variety of sources. And last, this is, this is really the true test. Am I comfortable using this source in academic or professional work? I will relay a personal story here. When I wrote my master's thesis, when I was in the process of writing that, I had an in my bibliography, I had a, an internet article that I cited. Mm -hmm. And when I turned in my draft to my academic advisor, the first thing he did was he went back and he looked in that bi bibliography and he circled the internet reference in bright red pen and said, you need to take this out. I was very embarrassed. I thought, oh, okay. That's not something that I should be comfortable using in academic work, a random internet source. Um, have you ever had an experience like this, Rob? Um, what I will say is a lot of the time, the person who wrote that cool internet article, hmm. a lot of the time if you look up their name, you'll find that they wrote something more academic somewhere else Right. that will be a more rigorous, better researched, that will have passed the test of other scholars checking it, hmm. and that will that will be a more academic fit for your writing right. and explain it better too. Always assume that you're going to have to justify why you used a source and why that source was appropriate when you're including it in your writing. Yeah, just imagine Barney standing over you saying, why did you choose that source? Why <laughs> did you choose that source? Yes. Uh, would you have an answer for him? 